when people say his art is revolutionary led to, you know, you said art before and after Pollock, what exactly about the drip paintings that a lot of people say, you know, oh, my five-year-old could do that. What about them is so revolutionary well, I, I think or new? The point you're making, and it's a good one, is that they weren't completely original in the sense that dripping was was not unique to Pollock. Max Ernst and um, the surrealist painter and Hans Hoffman, the the teacher at the art, uh, no, at the Hoffman School, who with whom Lee Krasner had studied, had both dripped paint as an artistic effect. And in fact, a man named Schwankowski, who taught in the in, in Jackson's high school, had used uh, spilling a paint onto a, a horizontal surface as a way of getting his students interested in, in making something. I mean, they, he used it as a, as a trigger to experimentation with artistic technique. So there were examples of dripping before Pollock. He's, and, and, and the fact is you can't be in a studio without dripping paint. I mean, the, the, to our astonishment, some of the old masters painted very carefully. Uh, you know, we see these paintings of some of these uh, 19th century figures who are, you know, in suits while they're painting, but still it's hard not to drip paint occasionally. Whistler famously flung some paint at a, uh, at a canvas to create an image of fireworks. Uh, so the, the possibility of flinging or dripping paint was already there. It, what, what was revolutionary uh, in Pollock was that he took this artistic effect and turned it into its own style. And that's what made it easy to make fun of. I mean, there were people who simply couldn't couldn't see what Pollock was attempting and achieving, and thought, "My God, anyone can drip paint." And uh, you know, my five year old child, a chimpanzee. Um, and in fact, there were a lot of jokes about it during Jackson's lifetime, which you know further um, created even more doubt in his mind as to whether what he was achieving was really meaningful or not. But um, what, what Pollock did there, I mean, it, w- once you begin to see how good these paintings are, especially at their best, you really begin to see how much energy and compositional variation, but compositional unity, how uh, there is in these paintings, how much, uh, how elegant the handwriting is. I mean, it's one of the reasons why Pollock's paintings are among the most difficult to forge is it's even though you you can go out there and drip paint it's incredibly difficult to create drips that are as um that have his signature uh handwriting but to your question about the you know before and after uh one of the challenges of of his drip drip paintings is that they have no apparent subject matter now it turns out, and one of the things we discovered is that in his head, there was there was at least in Lee Krasner's uh, words, always a subject matter. In fact, uh, Nicholas Carone, who I've mentioned, um, also described the process where he was uh, often in these strip paintings, cr- uh, painting three dimensionally in space and letting the paint drop on the on the canvas. So there was, if we're to understand both Krasner and Carone a um, representational trigger to these strip paintings. But having said that, they're essentially completely abstract in a way that most other painting before Pollock wasn't. You know, uh, Picasso always had a model. It was never just out of uh, thin air. And it's particularly difficult uh, to paint something out of nothing. And Pollock created that challenge. Uh, He created both a challenge and, um, and, and provided a model for pulling an image out of, out of the air. So after he, has, he did what he did, all of the artists of his generation, or most of them, began to try to come up with their own imagery that was itself completely abstract, so that you begin to get these signature styles, whether there are, they are Rothko's floating uh, rectangles or Clifford Stills, jagged uh, shapes. And what, what's astonishing here is that this became the answer to Pollock's lack of skill as a draftsman, 
meaning that because he could not compete with these other artists in drawing a face that looked like a face, he made that no longer necessary. In fact, he for a while there, he made it unacceptable. There were all these painting, painters around him, including his brother Charles, who were these incredibly talented draftsmen, and Pollock made that old-fashioned. He made it sort of uh, uncool to paint this representational imagery and took these painters who had tremendous gifts as a draftsman but didn't have the sort of uh, image-making skill that Pollock did and who really struggled to come up with abstract images to suit the new era that Pollock ushered in. So if, 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 you, if, you, come, if you look at it um, from, a, from a distance, you, you see this guy who couldn't do whatever all the other artists were doing. So he, he changes the whole, uh, the, the game so that what he was good at became the, the, um, uh, the crucial aspect of, of creating a successful art. Uh, it's really an astonishing thing that, that he just, uh, he goes from being unlikely to have any career whatsoever to having the most important career by changing the whole nature of what it meant to make a, a work of art.